Okay, formations. Why do they matter? What are the possibilities? What are all of the possible matchups? That's what I want to talk about today. And my big idea is that really there's not infinity different possibilities. There's only five that really matter for you. So the plan today is to talk about why this matters, how many formations exist, then how many matchups between formations exist. Then my big idea is that there's just five categories for them. And I run through an example using 433. So first off, why do the matchups matter? And I'm paraphrasing uh, something I heard Bielsa say. And he said, if you want to press, especially after a transition where you lost the ball, you can't leave a free player in the midfield because if you're playing a good team on the high level, they will simply find the open guy in the midfielder, in the midfield, and then they're going to make you pay. Okay, so, you know, if you want to press, you have to at least understand I need everyone in the midfield covered so there's no free, easy passes out there. Um, a flip side of this is that if you're not looking to press at all, if you're going more zonal from a defensive mid block and you're not even looking for certain press triggers, then this doesn't matter as much. It doesn't matter if there's a free player in the midfield, if the space between your lines are very compact and then multiple guys on your team can be guarding multiple guys on their team all at once. So this is more about pressing and counter pressing. Um, and, you know, teams of the highest level, even if they play mid block, often they do press at certain moments. So this is relevant. So when you're picking a formation, I think there's really only two big decisions that decide the formation. One is how many center backs are you going to run in the back center halves? It's pretty much either two or three. And then finally, what do you want in the center of your midfield? Two guys, three guys, or four guys aligned in a diamond. The amount of attacking players and other options all kind of depend on these choices. And with them, I think there's only six basic formations that exist, and everything else is just a variation of them. So here they are, 4-3-3, 3-5-2, 4-4-2, 3, 3, 3, 4, 3, 4 diamond 2, and 3 diamond 3. And I broke them into three categories about what's going on in the middle. Either you got three guys in some sort of a triangle, you got two guys in a pair, or you got four guys centrally in a diamond. And there's tons more formations that, you know, that are possible, but I'm going to claim they're just variations of these six. So with 4-3-3, you can play at what people call 4-3-3 three, three with one defensive midfielder, one pivot. You can play at 4-2-3-1, where now you have two pivots. You can put the midfield and the lines flat, like Liverpool does it, so like a flat 4-3-3. Three, three. You can kind of stagger the strikers, pinch them in, and have this Christmas tree triangle 4-3-2-1, or... If the wingers fall back, say you've gotten pass and you're recovering to mid-block, you could go to 4-5-1. And I'm claiming these are all basically the same thing because it's very superficial, the movements that change from one to the other. Another example would be that, you know, 3-4-3, three, three, you could call that 5-4-1, basically the same thing. Okay, so if six basic formations exist... How many matchups are possible? So here we see six. Here we see six. There's 36 outcomes here, but some of these are repeats. For example, if you look right here, uh, four, three, three versus three, five, two, but then right here we have three, five, two versus four, three, three. So if we get away, if we cut away all the repeats, then only 21 unique matchups are out there. And here they are. I've kind of grouped them where here are all the four, three, three matchups, the three, five, two matchups, and so on. So here are all 21 of these. So this is just the math involved in how many things are possible. And the whole point of this presentation is you don't have to know this stuff, but if you want to truly have every possibility covered uh, as you're coaching, it's good to have all the bases covered here. So 21 matchups, that's kind of a lot of things to know, 21. So you notice I have them color coded because I broke them into five categories. So let me resort them and show you the five categories. Here they are. The 
The first category, I'm calling the friendly matchups, plus one, plus zero, minus one. And I'm talking here about the three lines, your back line, the midfield, and the front line. These allow you to have a free player on the back line, man marked in the middle, and your minus one on the front line, the line that's the first line of pressure. So if you run 4-3-3 versus 4-3-3, you have this situation, 352 versus itself, 352, you have this situation, 442 versus 343, you have this plus one, plus zero, minus one situation. So even though these are four different matchups, the same concepts, the same issues are applying to all of them. Okay, moving over, second category, this is pretty straightforward, man on man. This is pretty much all throughout the field, it's man on man at each position. There's no free players, everyone is marked, and it's these five matchups. The remaining three focus on what's going on in the middle. In our green and red examples, uh, the midfield had parity, as in all the midfielders were marked. But here, in the blue, these are examples where there's three central midfielders versus two. The pink, there's three central midfielders versus a diamond. And then in the orange, two central midfielders versus a diamond. So here are my five categories. And so, just uh, understanding all of the matchups, it ultimately depends on what is your strategy. Um, for example, for me, for my team, maybe this season we're going to try to have a possession-heavy mold. So I want to maintain in the green. I like free players on the back line for um, possible open people there and cover on the back line to avoid direct play. So it's like, for me, I like to stay in the green. But it's possible you have other strategies. Maybe you have a team that's unbelievably athletic and you want a wild transition-focused game and you want man-on-man. -man. Understanding these matchups allows you to change what you're doing to fit your strategy. So I'll talk you through an example here. Here are solutions for me when I'm not in the green. When I'm man-on-man, -man, when I'm 3v2 or when I'm 3v diamond, how can I work this towards the overall strategy of what I want from my team? And I'll show you examples of these, but these are possible solutions. One is a shifting wide, de determining a strong and weak side. One is shifting up and down centrally. And one is shifting outside from inside to maintain parity. Okay, so I'll show you some examples of all these with 4-3-3. We'll start off with just 4-3-3 three, three verse itself. Here's that plus one, plus zero, minus one situation. So I'm saying we're the team in red, and we just lost the ball, so blue has it. And notice here, on the back line, I have a free player. So if they play direct, if they play a long ball, I'm always going to have one extra guy here. It's a bit of safety in the back. We're covered in the midfield, 3v3. Three three, there's no one going to be free. And then when we press up here, we have one less guy here, and this is where I'd prefer to be man down rather than closer to my own goal. So I like 4 3 3 versus 4 3 3. What if I run into 4 3 3 and the other team's running 3 5 2? This presents a man on man situation. Give it a look. Here are their back three, and here is my, my front three in a 3v3. The midfield triangle is matched up, and their wing backs and my full backs are matched up. This leaves my center backs 2v2, or possibly my total back line, if we scooted them out, possibly 4v4. And this can be scary because then on a direct ball you have no free player. They can get a little flick on in a 2v2 and be in on goal. So one possible solution here to help alleviate the pressure on the back line is I say strong side versus weak side shifting. So as soon as we determine if the ball is on one side of the field versus the other and we can cut the play to that field, then the fullback on the strong side, so here would be the right fullback, he knows he's free to go up as far as he needs to go to mark their wing back. Whereas on the flip side, this weak side fullback, let me grab him right here, he knows he is not supposed to be marking the other wing back, and instead he's connecting to the center backs, thus creating plus one in the back. Now this is a momentary solution for this problem 
because we are leaving a free player, their other side wing back, open. And if they do pass through us here and he joins the play, then it is 4v4. And to alleviate this, I would say, as soon as the strong side is determined, the weak side winger, he needs to be slowly leaving the center back and working back, not fast, but slow enough, that he, if they pass through, he can possibly stay with the other wing back. So we put one full back up and bring one winger back, and that's how we maintain plus one in the back. That's just one possible solution. There are other ideas out there. What if I have 3v2 in the middle because my 4-3-3 is playing a 4-4-2? So let's take a look. Here we are. They've got a back four. We're pressing with three. I have three in the middle. They have two. I have four on the back line. They have two central strikers and these outside midfielders. The issue is this, the issue with this, is that if a transition happens quickly and their outside midfielders both attack, it's possible that it leaves me 4v4 in the back. And there's no cover man. So, shifting central and vertically, as in one of these extra players we have in the middle, we currently have a 3v2 which is great, but I prefer to have the free zonal player closer to my back line than in the middle. So whoever is the closest CDM, if he knows, okay, I'm, I need to be dropping back, maintaining a connection to the back line, close enough that I can shift in at any moment. He doesn't have to drop in, but close enough that if the ball got played behind the back line, then he could shift in. Then we are able to maintain a 5v4 here. So what would happen? It's like if the game starts and I see they're in 4-4-2, um, you know, as a coach, I can communicate to the CDM that he needs to maintain this connection with the center backs. And if you've talked about this situation before, he'll know that it's less important that he man mark midfielders and that he stay closer back. Final situation, 4-3-3 versus 4-diamond-2. Okay, so there's their diamond. And the issue here is now they do have a free player in the middle of the field in this diamond. Obviously, they're going to change shape from after a transition. And they're going to get wide width and depth to try to possess the ball. And they do have a free player in the midfield. Now, if I was actually playing a game, the first thing I would do is nothing. And I would see if the other team is good enough to utilize this free player in the midfield. Because if they're not used to possession, if they don't change their spacing enough, then I think it's very possible that three of my guys might be able to cover the diamond. And that lets me stay plus two on my back line. So if they play direct ball or anything like that, I have two free players back here. If the team is good, though, and they have a dynamic midfield presence, the diamond is moving around in and out, and they are finding the free player there. We need to somehow create a 4v4 in the middle. And notice we don't want to move any of our top players in. So this is a weird shift, but if one of the fullbacks had better ability to play in the middle of the field, better possession skills if a transition occurred, um, better awareness because he's not near a sideline, he's in the middle 360, I would have one of the fullbacks, say it's our left back here, come into the middle and possibly mark one man in the diamond, thus creating a 4v4 here while we're still plus one on the back line. Now understand, this is just a defensive shift. So if we win the ball again, this fullback, he understands my job in possession is to maintain the width. He would go back to his spot here and possibly be a free player if their uh, player is not willing to reciprocate the man mark if he holds his position. Okay, so those are the five categories. Rather than knowing 21 possibilities, you only have to know five basic situations and you can make adjustments quickly. You know where the problem areas can be and you can quickly find solutions for them if you have this framework. Okay, hope that helped. Peace.